Hey, what's up, all? There's been a lot that's happened with the Seattle Seahawks going on over the last couple months. Um, so, start things out. Uh, Antonio Brown, there was a lot of talk with him coming to Seattle. Looks like Seattle was close to striking a deal, and then he announces that he retires. Um, it's probably a good thing um, that Seattle didn't sign him. Brown is notorious for being a bad locker room player, destroying locker rooms like Pittsburgh and Oakland. Did not survive long in uh, New England, so this is a good bolt. This is a bullet. Seattle dodged a bullet, a bullet there. So, Seattle's still waiting on the pending suspension of, or reinstatement, sorry, as um, uh, of wide receiver Josh Gordon. Uh, Josh Gordon played for for Seattle for like five or six games, was suspended at the end of this season. Seattle's hoping to get him back if he is reinstated. They said so out out in the open that they're going to go and re-sign him if they can get a get going if he's reinstated and he's not going to cost you anything. And it's, and I'm sure he's going to be a whole lot better. He's currently in Seattle and he wants to go to Seattle to re-sign him. So that's some big news going on with the free agent market. And then uh, coming in after that, NFL PA Players Association were able to strike a deal on how they were going to conduct the NFL training camp. This included taking away all four, of the, all four of the NFL preseason games that are going to be happening. Um, so that's very unfortunate. Um, but players' safety and all that, they need to, since they have not been, they did, did not have uh, many camps and training camps starting a little bit later. Not a lot of players have places to work out and get in shape. So this is going to be a longer workout uh, or a longer kind of get players acclimated to the game speed of the game and all that then going into the regular season on September 13th for Seattle Seahawks and the biggest news coming out of Seattle uh, Seattle made a huge blockbuster trade with the New York Jets to acquire Jets safety, safety Jamal Adams the all pro safety who was drafted in 2017 been in the Pro Bowl all three years and all pro. Um, Seattle, are, it was very evident that Jamal Adams was very um, upset about his situation in New York. He wanted to be resigned or given a contract ex extension. Did not work out. Jets were not willing to do that. He spoke out on social media against his head coach and general manager. Even spoke out against the owner of the franchise. He and then. A little bit into that, he went and posted on social media his list of teams he'd like to go to, go to which include uh, Seattle, San Francisco, and Dallas. All three of them were trying really hard to get him. Seattle ended up getting him for a tw uh, for two first round picks and a third round pick, um, and safety Bradley McDougal. Now, there's a lot of controversy going on with. Seattle fans being upset with Seattle mortgaging their future. But if you look in their past, Seattle has not been very good with their first round picks. Uh, they got, uh, over the last couple of years, you had LJ Collier. Yes, he was injured and he's not, he may have a great season, but still, I don't expect him to be the superstar that Adams is. Then in 2018, got Rashad Penny. Never turn into anything. I don't expect him to ever become anything like Chris Carson, um, or you know, any no superstar. Um, Twenty seventeen, they traded back, got Malik McDowell. That did not work out. Twenty sixteen, you got Jermaine Fetty, a decent player, not a Pro Bowler, Pro Bowl caliber player. Um, and then in twenty fifteen, they traded for Jimmy Graham, really good. Fans are upset, but he was a pretty decent player. 2014, they did not have a first round pick as well because of trading back. Uh, and then, um, no decent players in that draft. 2013, he traded for Percy Harvin. And then, probably their best first round picks were right off the, at the start of the franchise when they had all those first round picks with Earl Thomas, Russell Kuhn, um, James Carpenter, who yeah, even James Carpenter, Carpenter is on the level of um, uh, Jermaine Fetty. And then you got Bruce Servin, who was a decent pass rusher, but he's no superstar. So, my argument is 
Seattle did the right thing with trading away those draft picks. Yeah, they could have made extra, gained more draft capital if they traded back, but I think if Seattle needs to win now. You've got Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner and a bunch of a couple of players who are in their prime who do not have like 10 years to for Seattle restock their roster. They have a bunch of mid-range players who are pretty close to needing contract extensions or being re-signed. And so like in a year or so, next year, in the year following, Seattle's going to lose players like Chris Carson, uh, Shaquille Griffin, Shaquem Griffin, KJ Wright, um, Jaron Reed. Um, so you're not, Seattle's gonna need, Seattle needs to win now. So I'm excited about this deal. This makes Seattle's secondary, in my opinion, the best in the NFC West with Quentin Gunbar. He's still, it's still pending if he will, uh, you know, escape the charges and all that. But it, from all accounts, it sounds like he has, he was able to apply and be able to make it to Seattle's training camp, at least this training camp starting tomorrow, Tuesday, the 28th of July. So, we got Quentin Gumbar, Shaquille Griffin, who went to his first Pro Bowl. You got Quandre Diggs, who Seattle got last year in a trade, Pro Bowl alternate. And then you have safety Jamal Adams. So, very good secondary. And then, so right after all this happened, Seattle may announced a couple mid-range players who had a good chunk of money that they were pulling, you know, earning from Seattle. Uh, Senator Joey Hunt, uh, defensive end Brandon Jackson, who uh, were making, I think, I, I can't, I think it was around four to six million dollars in that range. Don't get, don't quote me on that, but it was that that range. So, and then they released us a handful of um, undrafted free agents, practice practice squad guys, all of that. So when they made that, when they cut all those people, if you look at their cap space with the amount of money they have left, they have 10 million plus the other, um, I think 7 million, which may, gives them 17 million dollars to spend. So a lot of people think Jadavion Clowney is still available. Jadavion Clowney, pretty much Seattle and Jadavion Clowney looks like that's going to happen, really possible. The only other team that looks like that could go and grab him would be the Tennessee Titans. But I think Seattle is quietly planning to build a superstar team, but not break the bank for 2020. So thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a like, comment on what you liked about it, any your thoughts on uh, Seattle's acquisition with Safety Jamal Adams, was he worth those draft picks? Do you think Jadavion Clown Clowney's coming back? And all of that. Uh, be sure to keep your eye out for more of my videos. I'll be doing more updates. Seattle's going to training camp tomorrow. Um, how certain players look like. This is the first time we'll be seeing all the rookies on the field, all the veterans who may be declining which rookie or surprise undrafted free agent will be. This is a shock player that could make Seattle's roster. So keep your eye out for that. Thanks for time for watching. I'll see you around.